Hey, what's up everybody? Kyle Buckland here with The Artful Souls. I just wanted to take a minute to talk a little bit about um, the importance of still life painting. And not just for still life painting's sake, but also how still life painting can help improve um, other aspects of your painting. And specifically how it can help improve your plein air landscape painting. Um, I noticed that a lot of painters that uh, are plein air painters and enjoy painting the land landscapes are uh, sometimes hesitant to set up a still life or you know come into the studio and, and focus on a, on a still life painting. Um, and you know, I think if you're passionate about painting the landscape, it makes sense that the majority of your work um, would would be landscape paintings. Uh, but I think it's it's really important to be a well-rounded painter. Um, you know, some of the best artists from the past, if you look at them and you look at their work, you'll notice that they didn't just paint one thing. Um, and I think that's because they understood the importance of um, coming out of our comfort zone and maybe trying something that's a little challenging and how, you know, painting one uh, type of subject matter can actually help improve how we see um, other subject matter. So uh, a great example of this is to, you know, think about if you go out landscape painting and let's say you set up on a farm and there's a beautiful old barn and in the barn is an old John Deere tractor and maybe some old farm tools uh, leaned up against the tractor. Um, and so you set up your easel and yeah, you're painting outside, you're plein air painting, but ultimately that's a still life painting. I mean, you're painting light falling on objects. Um, you know, you've, you've got the structure, you've got the form, you've got the drawing. Um, so that's just, just one example. Um, but really, you know, if you look at, for example, Claude Monet's haystack paintings, I mean, these are objects out in the field. Uh, so they're, they're sort of like oversized still lifes. Um, Another aspect of still life painting that can really help us with uh, with how you know we look at the landscape is the, the composing part of, of still life painting. So you know it's not just the painting itself, but when you're painting from life, you have the opportunity to take uh, different objects, flowers, fruits, dishes, you know whatever it is that you're you're painting, um, and then figuring out a way to compose them or arrange them that is um, the most aesthetically pleasing way. And so so just training your brain to think about that and to think about how we put together things. Um, can help you. You know, I know you're not going to be able to physically move elements of the landscape around, um, but thinking about composing and thinking about where does this need to be and where does this need to be um, will help you compose your painting when you're outside. Um, and another good reason is because you just don't, you don't want to get, you know, stuck painting the same painting. I know uh, it's tempting to find something that you're good at, find something that's easy, or find something that gets a, a good response from, from the public. Uh, or sells well, and then you continue to do that over and over again. And, and if you don't ever come out of your, your comfort zone, um, it's hard to grow. Um, so I, I, I wanted to take just a moment to take a look at some of my uh, favorite landscape painters' uh, still life paintings. Uh, because like I said, you know, these painters, and it's not just like they painted one or two still lifes. If you start looking, I mean, they painted hundreds of still life paintings. Uh, but we're just going to look at a couple here. We'll look at these... Um, these sunflowers here by Claude Monet. So if you take a look, um, you know, one thing that you'll see is that uh, he's able to really look at what colors are involved in making up um, these flowers. So you have a little bit more time when you're in the studio to study the way that light uh, affects an object. You know, when you're outside painting the landscape, you have to paint quickly. Uh, so when we're inside looking at still life paintings, he was, you know, Monet was able to bring these flowers in, set them up, have the light fall on them, and then take some time to contemplate, okay, what colors do I need to make this? Um, and, you know, he didn't have to switch his style up. You see, it's still Impressionism. It's still colorful. It still has that lively feeling of, of his landscapes. Um, you know, it's just a, a, different, a different approach as far as the subject matter. Um, another great landscape painter is John Singer Sargent, uh, one of my favorite all-time painters and a very well-rounded painter. Uh, he could paint almost anything, um, you know, a heck of a portrait painter, uh, beautiful landscapes, and then also some beautiful still life paintings. And um, this is an interior of his kitchen, uh, or his dining room rather, and uh, just take notice at how um, adept he is at, at capturing the light falling across these different objects and describing the different texture of the objects and the um, the way that the light uh, is reflected on them is just so masterful and you can really see his attention to um, to detail but but not the overly detailed type of detail it's more of a suggestion of detail so um, all good things that you can then take out into the field and use in your landscape painting so um, and last but not least we have Paul Cezanne so 
Um, you know, Cezanne was well known for uh, both landscape and still life paintings, but I think he's really the quintessential um, composer of still life. So if we look at the way that he arranged these objects, and not just in his painting, but the way that he set them up in, in real life, um, is just just really masterful and, and can, we can learn a lot about design and how to um, push and pull different areas of the painting and how um, using warm and cool colors to move the eye around, um, different notes of color, warm colors uh, to move the eye around. These are all lessons that you can then take out into the field. Um, and so, you know, the, the, the biggest takeaway from this is that I want you to um, find things that maybe are a little challenging for you and then push yourself to do those things and then that'll help you grow and kind of get out of your comfort zone so if you're interested in learning more about still life painting from life um, i'm offering a workshop in january at my studio in abingdon virginia where we'll be um, talking not only about painting still lifes but also about arranging setting up different objects how the light falling on the object affects the mood of the of the painting and um, you know also how these still life paintings. We'll go into more depth about how these still life paintings can help improve our plein air landscape paintings. So the link to my workshop page is in the description of this video down below. So uh, you can check that out or uh, just go to kylebuckland.com. Um, my Patreon page is in the description below if you want to support the, the channel and support uh, everything that I'm doing. I'd love to have you as a patron. Uh, you get access to some extra content um, on there. And if you haven't uh, subscribed to the Artful Souls channel, I uh, really appreciate that. It always helps with, um, with getting the videos out uh, in front of people. So, uh, so thanks so much for watching, and hopefully we'll see you in January at our Still Life Painting Workshop. And um, I look forward to bringing you more videos. So thanks so much for watching, and happy painting.